in this video, I wanted to show you one of the best defenses in Madden 22 right now. The meta is completely shifting. It's shifting more towards this coverage. And it's really good out of the nickel 335 um, formation or the 335 wide for that matter. And oh, this was something that was really good last year. I actually think it's making a, a comeback this year, but I want to show you kind of a unique way that you might consider running this if you want to use it for yourself. Now, um, if you're new to the video channel here, we do videos every day to help people become better Madden players. These videos help me get better at Madden, and so I hope that they help you get better as well. And we're talking today about a concept out of the 46 playbook, nickel 3 through 5 to 3 through 5 wide formation. You can do this out of other formations, but I do think it's very effective out of the 3 through 5 because of the personnel that you can get on the field to actually run this defense. And um, before we go too far into the video, I do want to let you know that if you want to get my full nickel 335 wide defensive ebook, I'm going to put a link in the description. By joining my Patreon for only $10, you can get my entire 46 defensive ebook. I actually have 335 normal, 335 wide, nickel normal, big nickel over G, dollar 326, and all of the bear defenses completely broken down in the membership. So if you want to sign up for that, that is going to be in the link in the description. You just have to click that link. It'll take you right over where you can get signed up for it. So guys, we're going to talk about what I would, I believe is probably one of the best defenses right now in the game. And it is, especially if your opponent is using um, an escape artist quarterback, they're not going to be able to have some of the same abilities route running wise that they once did. And so that's one of the reasons why this is a fairly effective defense. Uh, but there's also other reasons, too. I mean, just the fact that you have better players, the fact that this the game always kind of at least seems like at least for the last couple of years has kind of you know moved to a man coverage, um, a man coverage meta. And so I want to show you a really good tip for improving your man coverage and something that I've been messing around with. So um, I'm gonna set a couple different audibles man coverage wise. I'm gonna put the cover two man, I'm gonna put the Mike Wood zero, the cover one robber, and then for fun, we'll just put match coverage in there. And then um, I've got cover two man here, and uh, that's kind of the primary thing I wanna show you. And then from a personnel perspective, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to packages, and we're gonna flick our right joystick to the left until we get the safety nickelback package. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us better, um, or not better, just different, uh, different adjustments for our safeties in our defense. So you'll see here, I'm going to put a couple of substitutions here just so I can get my uh, best, best man coverage guys on the field. So we got Sullivan in the slot. You don't have to have him, but you see here, just kind of have a, a, a team here. And then when we get on the field. So um, what I want to show you, and I, what I think is really interesting I want to show you the differences between cover one and cover two man. So we're going to just use a simple, um, I'm just going to go to cover one robber and I'm going to run it the same way pretty much everyone does. They shade outside and they shade underneath. Now, if you, if you watch real closely, you see here, my guy is like over the top. If I shade outside and underneath, he, he's now going to be kind of like in a zone turn. Um, but anyways, the point is, so he's, he's shaded outside and underneath on the left side. So if I run a slant route, this is just an example, you'll see my guy will beat him to the inside and I can aggressive catch that slant over the middle. Okay. Now, um, if I run cover one robber, and let me just show you. So if I just run cover one robber and I press, I don't do anything else. I just simply press my coverage. Okay, and it looks like this. I want you to watch the slant route. So on a simple test of a slant, you see he's going to break inside. He's going to beat him, for the most part, to the inside, as you can see. So cover one robber naturally is a, it's not going to be an inside technique that they're going to turn on. Now, if I go to cover two man, actually, you know what? Let's show you one other thing. If I go to cover one robber and I shade inside and underneath, okay? Now notice where my corner's at. See how he's more inside here? If I were to want you to watch this corner here on the left, if I were to shade outside, watch what he'll do. He'll move. See that? So he moves inside. So he's got inside technique on that player. Um, now I've got a slant. Watch what happens. Now it's a lot more covered over the middle of the field, as you can see. So when you shade cover one robber inside, it covers the inside breaking pattern as you might expect. What's interesting about cover two man 
is if you look closely, it's already in an inside technique because the, that's the technique of the coverage. Because where's the help in a cover two defense? The help is outside. It's not inside. There's no real inside help. Um, so you can see here, you know, this is this is just a, it's just interesting how this this plays in. So if I pinch my linebackers here, that's also going to put my linebackers a little bit more inside. Now when I run this slant against cover two, I haven't shade, I haven't shaded yet. I have done no shading. And what you'll see here is this slant is very similarly guarded like it was to cover one robber. So those are some differences in terms of the nuance of the coverage. So now with cover two man, what happens if I shade it inside and underneath? If I shade this inside and underneath, again, just illustrating it with the slant, a simple slant, look at the slant. Look how guarded that slant is now, okay? So now I wanna take that knowledge and I wanna turn it into um, something that we can do with our safeties to make this really interesting. Um, another thing that we talked about was the shade underneath. Do we need the shade underneath? Well, if we shade underneath, um, you know, is that really helpful? Okay, well, let me give you an example. So this is a shade underneath and I'm gonna try to throw like a, let's just say I try to throw this corner arch goblin. Shade inside and underneath and look what happens. You see here, for the most part, it actually plays it okay, even though his route running ability lights up. And so where does my, again, where does my help come from? My help comes from the outside. So all I'm gonna do is shade outside, and now what you're gonna see is these outside guys can be hot routed into outside thirds. What's really nice about them being able to be hot routed into outside thirds is now they will be a little bit more outside based in terms of how they're gonna help on a corner route. So you'll see now this corner route that was wide open before is not open, and, I'm, and also I didn't shade it underneath. I didn't shade the cover to man underneath. I just trusted the coverage to play uh, the trail technique inside, and that's all I needed. And so we'll show it to you again. That corner route that was getting open before. Let me throw the safeties in their zone. And what you'll see here, watch this corner. He gets his ability, but look at that third top the route, and he's right in that area to be able to make a play on this. Now, another thing that we have to understand about this is um, another popular man beater from Bunch is the post the post route from the solo receiver, okay? Remember, my guy is inside of him. So if he runs a post route, let me show you this, just for fun. Watch the post. Here, my guy misses a jam. And so you see that, see how he misses a jam and the post is there. Now again, my user can help with that, but but I don't really want to have the user around. I want the man coverage to just play. So here to show it to you again now. I want you just to watch this post on the left, kind of test this coverage. When he gets the the press, he still beats him, but but not by much. So what can we do? What what are the options in our on our tool belt? Well, our number one thing we can do is shade inside. We're going to try to get a little bit more inside leverage. And we're gonna try to hang with that route. Because we if we don't have to deep third to stop a post, this thing gets so much better. So watch him here, he gets the press, and look at this coverage on that post route. That's pretty dang good coverage on a post route. So cover two man, shade inside, don't mess with the press technique, because that's where you get messed up in terms of how these routes can, really what you're looking for is the perfect press, because if you get really good press in this game, it's really hard to um you know to get to get jacked up like this so you see here that time he got the he got the the press the press animation and that's more of a mike evans thing um that you got to pay attention to that's more of a fact that stokes doesn't really have good press and but you're gonna have guys they're not gonna miss the press because they're all gonna have 90 you know 97 uh press rating see how he's missing the press right there if he misses the press then yeah he gets open um let me show you one last thing about this that i think is interesting so we talked about how, you know, if we can if we can not have to worry about the press, we're going to be in good shape. Um, another adjustment you can make, and I talked about this before, put this guy in an outside quarter and shade inside. So you see, it looks like this. This guy's going to be in man coverage on Mike Evans, but because he's in an outside quarter, his coverage, his technique, it's all going to play a little differently here. So you'll see right here, he'll still he'll match. Actually, I might have zone drops on. Let me make, let me make sure my zone drops are on are not on you need to make sure your zone drops are off if you're going to do this but this is a huge tip for bunch trail 
Um, let me just see if they have. Let me just see if they have Munch Trail. Not sure if they will. They have Flanker Drive. They have Munch Trail, but it's not the right one. So we'll just use Flanker Drive. Okay. Um, I want you to watch this post route. So again, um, we saw that the post route, even the Hot Route Master one, which isn't as good, it you know gets open. If I put this guy in an outside quarter and pass commit and shade inside, I want you to watch how he plays this post route. Let's see here. He plays it. He, he still gets a jam, but look how he doesn't get burned. He doesn't get burned at all, and he plays it perfectly across the field. Okay? So that is so kind of a little bit of a next level thing, but you can use this um, in a really productive way. Now, another, another thing that really gets me um, in this coverage, and I've been testing this out for the, latter part of the, the better part of the last week, but what can get you in this coverage is the wheel routes. Well, because we have outside thirds on the field, this wheel route to Miller, you'll see right here, he gets over the top of this guy, but the third is there to help kind of bracket that play right there, as you can see. Let me show you what that looks like if we don't put, that's why we put this package. That's the main reason we put this package out there. Let me show you what this looks like if that's not the case. Let me just show you. So if they run a wheel and you have a deep half out there, watch Scotty Miller, you'll see that that, that uh, cover two, it, it's gonna be hard for it to get over there. Now Brady has a terrible arm, but you you can get that wheel over the top. I just, I promise you, you can. So that's something you have to watch out for. Now, what this, this kind of natural byproduct of this problem is now your tight end can be a little problematic because your tight end is gonna be running down the middle. Um, so you'll see right here, you see that my tight end wheel late in the play can be a thing. So that's something else that you kind of need to um, anticipate. That's really where I think your user is gonna come in on this. If the tight end, most people like, yeah, I guess most people are putting their tight end on a wheel, but, but most people, what you can also do is you can manually on the tight end, you just want to uh, shade them to the right, if you will. And I'll show you, if you watch um, the tight end real close, closely here, you'll see that now, um, you see my guy doesn't get burned over the top. Okay, everything else plays really well. And um, that's just something you might wanna play in. The better man coverage you have, obviously, the better they're going to play, the better agility. All those things matter. Um, with this guy right here, what I also like about this is let's say we get a route combo that the tight end goes to the corner. So like a smash return concept like this. If you watch this tight end route, you'll see here um, plays it pretty well. Plays it pretty well. Okay. It's never going to press the tight end, so you're not really trying to get that guy to press him. Um, you know, so what you're really trying to do is you're trying to, and you don't even really need an outside third from this guy. So what you could do is you could even you could cross man this guy on the tight end, and then have a an under, underneath zone. So it looks like this because you don't need a deep zone on that side. You just need that third to be able to stop that route. So now you have you know something like this that you could run. And what's good about this is we know that the the post on the left side, uh, for the most part, is going to get bagged, as you can see. So that is how you can really take your main coverage to the next level in this game. Um, that quarter trick I broke it down earlier in the week, and then the cover two man I think is a little bit better than we're giving it credit for um, because of how well it can stop because of the trail coverage technique, the way that they're going to play with leverage to the inside. That's going to help a lot with some of those underneath routes. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this breakdown, this is a little bit of what we do in our offensive and defensive events, except we give you a full scheme uh, with audibles and adjustments for every coverage and every defense. So if you want to check that out, that's going to be linked down in the description below. You can sign up for all of our eBooks. You get all of them by joining our Patreon. And it's only $10 to sign up for the membership. And again, it gets you access to everything, all 28 offensive and defensive guides. Just released that big nickel guide this week. Been getting great reviews on that. A lot of people really encouraged um, on the defensive side of the ball with that defense. So if you want to check all, all the content, the link is down in the description.